you can use the key circuit to switch between two different inputs. For example, you could have the microphone go to the sound card input, or you can have a transducer. Uh, then the power, is, uh, we use the USB power to uh, power the, the key circuit. That's, that was easy because the person would always have the key circuit next to the laptop. And then uh, we wanted the user to know which uh, state the, the, the system was in, either sending or receiving. So the LEDs, the, the, the red one shows that uh, you're picking a signal, and the green one shows that you're sending a signal. And basically, this is just a video of us testing, uh, it's pretty short, testing the key circuit functionality. And on the oscilloscope, as you can see, the top signal is the, the, the signal coming from the sound card, and uh, the other two are either the microphone or the microphone. So whichever we want to go to the sound card. So we had to use um, three different APIs, basically, to access the sound card data. Um, I'm going to start with the bottom of the slide and look up. <coughs> ALSA is the advanced link sound architecture. It's, the, it's, it's like the low-level um, sound API. So you can set all the parameters of the different um, input devices or output devices. Jack is actually an audio server, which you can allow the same multiple applications to use the same sound data. Um, it simplifies ALSA, but it still is giving us problems a little bit. And then Stanford Center for Computer Research and Music and Acoustics developed real time audio. It simplified both of them. It actually uh, simpler, reduced our amount of lines of code, and uh, it's callback based, so we can do modulation and do modulation in real time. Um, originally, we were going to use MATLAB to do the signal processing, but the integration of that with C began to give us problems. So because of time constraints, we decided to do it in C++. And it was actually a lot easier than I thought. Um, just using the CMAP library, uh, generate the cosine for the carrier, the carrier frequency. Um, T is incremented for every eight bytes of data because the sound data is a double. Also, we had to use digital filters to clarify the signal and the output part. And using the linear difference equation, um, and the code and every other callback functions. And MATLAB generated the coefficient for that. So we still use MATLAB a little bit. And this is um, our whole system, basically. The, first, the yellow line is the input. The green line is the modulated signal coming out of the computer. The first purple line is actually the signal after it comes from the water. And the pink line is the output from the receiving end. Um, we gave a survey for how audible our system actually was using the phonetic alphabet with pre-recorded signals and we had an 89% success rate and actually most of the errors were people weren't familiar with the phonetic alphabet so they had to go look for the letters and they were missing the answer. Alright, so in this video we're going to show a full system test from end to end. Uh, we have one computer one in the lab and we go right here to the technical and then underwater, and there's a long cable on the other side of the lab where we can see the signal. Can you actually get it? Oh, hi. Welcome to the setting session. I'm John. This is our set. Here we have the computer running the modulation. Yeah. The signal travels from the microphone into the key circuit, where it's taken into the computer, where the modulation takes place. After that happens, the computer sends a signal back to the key circuit into the amplifier. From the amplifier, the signal is transmitted by the transmitting transducer on the left and received by the hydrophone on the right. Where the signal is sent to our receiving station. The signal is sent to the receiving station where it's demodulated, filtered, and sent to the user. Hi, welcome to the receiving station. John is about to send this message. Let's listen in. Echo. Uniform. Romeo. Echo. Echo. Kilo. 
Alpha.